Welcome to video seven in the Heart 2402 lecture series. I got pretty good at saying that stuff now. Uh, this next two slides are all words, and I apologize, and they're very busy. So let's see what we can do. This, these are all about heart rate and how you regulate it. So here's the first slide right here. Heart rate, number of beats per minute, stroke volume, how much blood gets released by each ventricle per beat. And I've got some rough numbers here. Uh, cardiac output is how much you put out a minute. I didn't put that, but it's milliliters per minute. So if we've got beats per minute and milliliters per beat, we can calculate milliliters per minute by uh, you know eliminating beats. So uh, heart rate times stroke volume, how fast you're beating, how much you beat, gives you cardiac output. For an average person, that's five liters, 5.25 liters ballpark. Bigger people, more, Smaller people, less. if your heart rate goes up and your stroke volume goes up, your cardiac output goes up. So when you go out for a run, your cardiac output's gonna be more than that. That amount it can go up is called the cardiac reserve, or CR. A lot of abbreviations here, I apologize. Uh, which is your max cardiac output minus your resting cardiac output. So if you have a resting cardiac output of five liters per minute and you go for a really intense run, and it gets up to 25 liters per minute, that's about five times, right? So 25 liters per minute in this case is your, uh, uh, your cardiac reserve. Uh, super athletes can get uh, up to about seven times or more. Now stroke volume is specifically, again, another formula here. It's gonna make sense, just don't freak out. And diastolic volume, so what does diastole mean? What is diastolic volume? If you can get where those terms mean stuff to you right away, you're gonna be able to understand this. So diastole is relaxation. So at the end of diastole, your ventricle should be at its greatest volume. When it's done, when it's all finished relaxing and it's about to contract, it's at that EDV. At the end of systole, it's already squeezed all the way down, right? So it's as low as it can be in volume. So I take my maximum volume minus my minimum volume, and that gives me how much blood left, or the stroke volume. Here's some uh, rough numbers. Uh, end diastolic volume is usually around 120 mils. and systolic, systolic volume is around 50, so 120 minus 50 is about 70, um, which is where you get right there, 70 milliliters per beat, right? Now, a couple of factors can affect stroke volume, and they are these three, that are three factors. Preload and contractility both uh, act in a sort of a, a, a what's the word? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. An increase in them results in an increase in stroke volume. So what am I trying to say there? I've lost that term. Uh, greater preload, and this is how how big your how stretched out that muscle is. So the bigger volume you have at the beginning, the greater amount you can pump out. Oops, what did I do there? Um, contractility is how strong your muscle is. So stronger, better. Now after load is gonna be a negative. So after load is how much back pressure you get in the arterial blood, and this is your diastolic pressure effectively. So if, you have, if you've got normal blood pressure of like 120 over 80, there's only 80 millimeters of mercury resistance to you trying to pump blood out. If you have hypertension, so you're 150 over 100, let's say, the 100 is the number here, right? That's diastolic pressure. That means that you've got 20 millimeters more resistance to you trying to get the blood out, uh, which is not good for your heart, and we'll talk about that under disorders uh, later. So if you increase preload, how, how much stretched out the muscle is, increase contractility, you get greater stroke volume. If you get higher blood pressure back in, uh, in your arteries resisting, then you've got a smaller stroke volume. All right, how do we regulate heart rate? Uh, your autonomic nervous system does it all the time. If you remember those cardio acceleratory and cardio inhibitory regions, that's what I'm talking about here. At your normal resting rate, it's what's called the vagal tone because of that vagus nerve. There's experiments that they've done where they've cut the vagus nerve and uh, the heart rate will shoot up to like 100. So uh, don't cut your vagus nerve. 
Um, sympathetic stimuli, like exciting stuff or whatever, scary movie, uh, like I said, athletic competition, that's going to cause uh, sympathetic stimulation and uh, result in an increased heart rate, increase in stroke volume. Parasympathetic, like when you've just eaten uh, or are getting ready for bed, uh, should lower heart rate. Now, some of these chemicals can affect heart rate as well. Uh, the epinephrine and norepinephrine that you produce in your adrenal glands, as we know, kind of mimic the sympathetic nervous system effects and they kind of work together. So if you get scared, not only are you going to get direct nervous stimulation that increases heart rate, but you're also going to stimulate the adrenal gland, which will release epinephrine, which will increase heart rate. Um, ions like calcium, potassium can affect it. And I left that in the complete notes, which you'll see. As you get older, your heart rate decreases. Uh, females generally have a higher resting heart rate than males on average. Uh, exercise, of course, increases it. Here's the interesting thing. If you are regular, if you regularly exercise, you're, well, let's just say that you exercise, I go out and run. Well, when I'm running, yeah, my heart rate goes up. But if you regularly exercise at rest, your heart rate will be lower because your whole cardiovascular system gets more efficient at uh, pumping blood, and uh, conducting aerobic respiration so that if you're in good shape, you're going to be able to have a fairly low resting heart rate. And this will give you uh, as well a greater uh, cardiac reserve so you can you, by having the lower rate at rest. If you get warm, your, your heart rate goes up. All right, this is the second to last video. The next one is our last one. So that was video seven and do check the complete notes.